Hey, Mr. Clark. Yes. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Anya Whitney. I'm a special agent with DOJ OIG. You can just turn that off for me. Um, can you step outside with me? We've got a search warrant and we need to um, speak to you today. Can I get you to step outside for me? Can I call my lawyer? Sure. Um, Come on outside and do it. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's step outside. And we'll just real quick, we got to clear the house, make sure it's safe. Is your wife home? Uh, no, nobody's home. Okay, okay so no one is in there? You can absolutely call your lawyer. Go ahead and step outside with me real quick. Okay. And then we'll put you over here behind your car so no one will see you. Yeah. Go ahead and step on out here. Come on this way. With, can I put pants on first? Sir, sure. we've got to clear the house. We're going to clear the house. Sure as soon as we clear the house, we'll get you to talk to your lawyer and we'll get some pants on, okay? Can I open the sure. garage and stand in the garage? It's a search warrant. It's a Step search warrant. Just come on right over here. Please. You stand behind the cars and we'll see you. There's no reason. All right. Well, CNN obtained a copy of police reports, which indicate officials seized a number of electronic devices from Clark during that early morning raid. Officers also dispatched an electronic sniffing dog to search Clark's house. The news coming as we're learning the DOJ's investigation appears to be picking up steam. Republican operatives connected to Trump's fake elector scheme are set to turn over information as soon as tomorrow. The DOJ has now issued numerous subpoenas in just the past few weeks for information in all seven battleground states where Trump's campaign convened those fake electors. Welcome back to the broadcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. So the sorry specimen that you just saw getting his home raided by the FBI last month was Jeffrey Clark, a former AAG in the Justice Department under Donald Trump, and the person who was trying to corrupt the Justice Department from the inside because Donald Trump wanted to appoint him as the attorney general, uh, replacing a responsible and knowledgeable person in criminal law known as Rosen. And basically everybody in the Justice Department said that they would quit if uh, Donald Trump did that. And Donald Trump was successfully scared away and embarrassed away from doing that. Along those lines, he said, so suppose I do this. So suppose I replace him, Jeff Rosen, with him, Jeff Clark. What would you do? And I said, Mr. President, we resigned immediately. I'm not working one minute for this guy. Um, who I had just you know, declared was completely incompetent. And so um, the president immediately turned to, uh, to Mr. Engel and he said, Steve, you wouldn't resign, would you? And he said, absolutely I would, Mr. President, you leave me no choice. And, and then I said, and we're not the only ones, no one cares if we resign. If Steve and I go, that's fine, it doesn't matter, but I'm telling you what's gonna happen. You're gonna lose your entire department leadership. Every single AAG will walk out on you. Your entire department of leadership will walk out within hours. And I don't know what happens after that. I don't know what the United States attorneys are gonna do. We have um, US attorneys in districts across the country. And my guess would be that many of them would have resigned. And that would then have led to resignations across the department in Washington. And I said, Mr. President, within 24, 48, 72 hours, you could have hundreds and hundreds of resignations of the leadership of your entire Justice Department because of your actions. What's that going to say about you? And this has been fully explained during the January 6th committees. The people who were there, uh, the people who worked under Donald Trump, like uh, Richard Donahue and uh, uh, Rosen and Engel and other people who were in the Justice Department at the time, appointed by Donald Trump. These are people who voted for Donald Trump, but they respect America more than Donald Trump, and they chose the Constitution and the law over the criminal actions that Donald Trump wanted to take. So Donald Trump didn't like them and and wanted to um, wanted to replace them with this clown named Jeffrey Clark, who is a civil attorney. He has no idea how to con conduct criminal investigations. He's not a criminal lawyer, doesn't know criminal law, doesn't know election law, is not in any way competent to run the Justice Department. But nevertheless, uh, a desperate and uh, conspiracy loving Donald Trump wanted to put this guy in power because he is also a conspiracy theorist and he wanted to send this letter uh, to Georgia. In this letter, uh, Clark lied or he planned to lie to the Georgia governor, the Speaker of the House 
and uh, the president of the Senate basically telling them that the federal Justice Department had found irregularities in their uh, vote counts and their vote machines and there are problems in uh, Georgia and many other states. He says multiple states. This is a lie. Um, the ju- the, the uh, deputy attorney general had already sent the FBI to investigate all this stuff. Richard Donahue, who was the uh, second in command at the Justice Department under Trump, had already investigated all these uh, lunatic conspiracy theories that Donald Trump and his friends on Twitter had come up with and had found no evidence of legit uh, voter fraud at a level to change the outcome of the election. So it was already a done deal. As we got later in the month of December, the uh, president's entreaties became more urgent. He became more adamant that we weren't doing our job. We need to step up and do our job. Um, And he had this arsenal of allegations um, that he wanted to... um, to rely on. And so I felt in that conversation that was incumbent on, on me to make it very clear to the president what our investigations had revealed and that we had concluded based on actual investigations, actual witness interviews, actual reviews of documents, that these allegations simply had no merit. And I wanted to try to cut through the noise because it was clear to us that there were a lot of people whispering in his ear, feeding him these conspiracy theories and allegations. And I felt that being very blunt in that conversation might help make it clear to the president that these allegations were simply not true. And so as he went through them in what for me was a 90-minute conversation or so, and what for the former acting AG was a two-hour conversation, um, as the president went through them, I went piece by piece to say, no, that's false, that is not true, and to correct him Um, really in in a serial fashion as he moved from one theory to another. So the entire purpose of this whole enterprise was to provide evidence for the uh, for the Republicans in Congress, in the federal Congress, to object to the certification of the electors from Georgia and other states and introduce competing slates of electors. uh, A.K.A. fake electors. So the fact that he mentions the competing slates here. Uh, lets us know that he was working in concert with John Eastman because you guys will know if you've been paying attention that John Eastman is the one who came up with a plan to do the fake electors and he was working together with Giuliani and uh, and Powell and Flynn and other people to make that happen and this guy so while while he's planning that Eastman is doing that outside he's not in the Justice Department um uh, Clark's job was to take over the Justice Department and send out this letter to Georgia and other states because he mentions multiple slates, uh, states, not just Georgia. But in this particular uh, letter, he's uh, he's sending this. He wanted to send this to uh, Georgia. Luckily, he didn't get to send it because he never got to be the attorney general. And the all the other reasonable, law-abiding, non-traitorous people at the Justice Department, which is most people there, they stopped him from sending this illegal lie to Georgia. Okay, The whole point was to send this letter with... Uh, uh, the Justice Department's letterhead here, and and therefore using the credibility of the federal Justice Department to uh, to push these election conspiracy theories. Okay, it didn't work, but that was the plan. So that's that was his mens rea. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to commit a, a felony. Okay, and, and we'll get to the exact felonies that he committed at the end here, but. As a result of everything that I just explained, he is facing a disciplinary action uh, from the Board of uh, Professional Responsibility of the District, uh, the D.C. uh, Appeals Courts. Okay, so uh, this happened on uh, July 19th. This was filed uh, into the record. And uh, and basically what he's facing here is a possible disbarment. He's probably going to lose his license, although uh, they don't say exactly uh, what they want him to happen here. So if you guys read all the way to the bottom at the Again, they just say the Office of Disciplinary Counsel requests that the board consider whether the conduct of the respondent, Jeffrey Clark, violated the, uh, the D.C. rules of professional conduct. If so, that it impose slash recommend appropriate discipline. So I wish they just came out and said that he should be disbarred here, but they uh, hedged a little bit. So I'm kind of disappointed on that. So let's get to exactly what they state here, because if you read what they say here, what it, what it proves is that he is a habitual liar and that he is not in any way uh, fit to be a lawyer in D.C. or in, in any other jurisdiction. OK, so this is what they say. The disciplinary proceedings instituted by this petition are based upon conduct that violates the standards governing 
the practice of law in the District of Columbia as prescribed by D.C. Bar Rule 10 and Rule 11, Section 2B. Jurisdiction for this disciplinary proceeding is prescribed by D.C. Bar Rule uh, 11, pursuant to D.C. Bar Rule 11, Section 1A. Jurisdiction is found because the respondent, Jeffrey Clark, is a member of the Bar of the District of Columbia Appeals Courts, uh, having been admitted on July 7, 1997 and assigned Bar Number 455315. And the conduct and standards that the respondent has violated are follows. And then they go on to describe exactly what I just told you. They list exact dates on how things happened here. So they start from right after the election. They go on to uh, describe the fact that Barr uh, found no evidence of election fraud. Richard Donahue, who was the associate, uh, who's the deputy attorney general, found no evidence of uh, of election fraud. But nevertheless, Jeffrey Clark went on to send that letter. And that is the whole reason that he's being basically put up for disbarment, uh, which is something that is very likely to happen. We'll have to see exactly what they do. They might just uh, slap him on the wrist. I don't know who is at the uh, who's overseeing this board. So it depends on how tough they are. If I was there, he'd be disbarred immediately. I, I, this liar cannot be uh, given a chance to practice law anywhere. But Again, the people who are there are going to determine this. But the letter says the proof of concept letter, which is the letter I just showed you guys, right? This was the letter that he wanted to send to Georgia, basically lying on behalf of the Justice Department because the Justice Department, as Richard Donahue and Rosen have said, found no evidence of wide scale election fraud enough to change the election. So he is a liar. This entire letter is based on a lie. That's that's almost equal to lying on uh, on uh, court documents, which a, a lawyer cannot do. And they can be disbarred if they lie on court documents. So technically, this is not a court document and it wasn't sent. But we know that he had the mind to send it because he wrote it. He wrote down the lie. The only reason that this letter didn't go out and cause a giant constitutional crisis is because Donahue and Rose and all the other people at the Justice Department threatened to quit. OK, if Donald Trump had appointed um, this crazy person, Clark, uh, to the head of the Justice Department, he would have sent this letter out. And who knows what would happen? OK. <clears throat> the proof of concept letter was addressed to the governor, speaker of the House, and the president of the Senate. It recommended that the governor call the Georgia legislature into special session and argued that if the governor refused to do so, the legislature had the authority to convene such a session on its own initiative. It was drafted to be signed by Rosen and Mr. Donahue and the respondent, Clark. Uh, the proof of concept letter stated that the Department of Justice had identified significant concerns that may be that may have impacted the outcome of the election in multiple states, including Georgia. Now, I showed you guys that that's this letter. OK, this uh, quote here which is a, a lie. And that's what they say here. This statement was false, a.k.a. that's a lie. The department was aware of no allegations of election fraud in Georgia that would have affected the results of the presidential election. The proof of concept letter stated. Now, these are all the lies that he's told. He, they're just going through and listing all the lies here. I highlighted some that I want to read, you guys, read to you guys just to make my point here. Uh, the proof of concept letter stated that the Department of Justice found, it, quote, troubling uh, the current posture of a pending lawsuit in Fulton County and the legislation's sluggish pace. This statement was false. There's nothing wrong with the lawsuit. Uh, There's nothing sluggish about the lawsuit uh, in Fulton County. They lost. OK, the department had no involvement in the Fulton County case and was not concerned by its lack of progress. More. The proof of concept letter stated uh, that the Department of Justice had concluded that the governor should convene a special session of the Georgia legislature. This was also false. Another lie. The department had not made such a determination. So he's just just blatantly making things up just to lie to the state uh, authorities to get them to do what they wanted and stop the certification of the election, stop uh, stop the proceedings on January 6th and introduce a fake slate of electors, which is what he talked about here with the competing slates. There are no competing slates. There's only one slate. And the state and Governor uh, Kemp had already certified the uh, the slates of electors. OK, the legit ones, the fake ones are now being investigated uh, by the by the assist uh, by the district attorney in Georgia. She, she just targeted them as uh, potential criminal defendants okay, in Fulton County. So, yeah, that's what's really happening. And uh, furthermore, at around 6 p.m. on December 28, 2020, respondent met with Mr. Rosen and Mr. Donahue. They informed the 
responded, Mr. Clark, uh, that they would not authorize or sign the letter because it contained false statements, a.k.a. lies. Mr. Donahue explained that none of the investigations into election fraud or irregularities in Georgia had produced reliable evidence of fraud or other irregularities that would have affected the outcome of the presidential election. Uh, but nevertheless, even after getting this information from Donahue, who was the head person at the Justice Department who was corresponding with the FBI and keeping an eye on all the investigations. Despite that, he didn't want to believe Donahue or Rosen. He just continued to push these conspiracy theories. Uh, and uh, finally, Mr. Rosen and Mr. Donahue again refused to send the proof of concept letter because he pressured them again to send the letter. And then he used Trump's authority to pressure uh, them. If you guys listen to the fifth hearing of the uh, January 6th committee, they talked about this in detail. Uh, beat by beat, they went over what happened. And the way that this was resolved, the way that Clark was defeated, his request to send this letter was defeated because uh, Donahue, Rosen, and all the other AAGs, the assistant attorney generals, were uh, threatened to quit en masse. And that would be a giant embarrassment for Donald Trump. Uh, so he decided not to put Clark at the head of the Justice Department because, because the, the current heads of the Justice Department refused to send this letter because they're honorable people. Uh, Rosen and uh, Donahue refused to send it because they're honorable people and they're not going to lie to the authorities in Georgia. That would make them felons uh, uh, trying to commit the same election election crimes that uh, that Clark has com has committed and now uh, most likely is going to be prosecuted for real soon. OK, so they all declined and the letter didn't get sent because the people in the Justice Department are real patriots and not traitors. And just because and all of them probably voted for Donald Trump, by the way, because these are all people who are Republicans and appointed by Trump, but they value the Constitution and American law over Donald Trump and his selfish goals. So Everybody at the Justice Department, all the heads stood up against Donald Trump and Clark, and they didn't sign this letter. OK, and finally, um, the document says respondents conduct, a.k.a. lying all over the place uh, in count one, violated the following District of Columbia rules of professional conduct. Rule 8.4 uh, in that correspondent attempted to engage in conduct involving dishonesty by sending a proof of concept letter containing false statements, a.k.a. giant fat liar. And Rule 8.4 A and D uh, in that correspondent attempted to engage in conduct that would seriously interfere with the administration of justice. In other words, uh, this is obstruction of justice, right? In a criminal context, this would be obstruction of justice and this would be perjury. Those are other words to describe what he did. And those are things that officers of the court, a.k.a. lawyers, would be disbarred for. So that's why I said in the beginning that he should be disbarred. He did obstruction of justice and perjury okay if any if this was any regular lawyer in any other case they would be disbarred so that's what should happen to him so as i said in the beginning they don't go as tough as i would have i would have recommended disbarment but they're just the office of disciplinary counsel is simply asking the board to consider whether he violated um the rules it's clear that he did like i said perjury obstruction of justice that's the equivalent of what he did in this letter by trying to pollute and corrupt the Justice Department, which is, to me, the worst kind of violation. So finally, let's get to uh, the criminal uh, conduct that was committed by Clark here, federal laws that he violated. Uh, now, I've talked about these laws. These are the same laws that uh, Donald Trump has violated. But uh, but you guys can see here that uh, he violated them as well. So obstructing congressional or administrative proceedings, that's what he was trying to do, trying to obstruct the uh, proceedings on January 6th. This carries a five year sentence, uh, 18 U.S. Code 1505, conspiracy to obstruct or defraud. That's another thing that he was doing, uh, both uh, in D.C. and also in Georgia. And uh, the Georgia uh, authorities have to go after him for what he tried to do there. But uh, the federal authorities can go after him because the conspiracy goes uh, is between multiple people. Uh, like I said, Eastman, uh, Clark, Donald Trump and uh, Giuliani and all the people who knew about this, who were involved in this, who made phone calls. They're all liable. They're all guilty under 18 U.S. Code 371. OK, so these two charges, they can get them definitely. Uh, another thing is uh, 18 U.S. Code 1512B. This applies more to Donald Trump because he called people and tried to intimidate them. And uh, but uh, Jeffrey Clark also did it. He also attempted to send this letter to intimidate, basically using the authority of the Justice Department to threaten slash intimidate the governor and the House leader and the Senate leader to get them to uh, do some fake investigation to find fake evidence to try to block uh, uh, the slate of electors, the legit slate of electors with a fake 
legislative electors. And Clark himself tried to corruptly persuade Donahue and Rosen and, uh, and other people in the Justice Department to see things his way. He specifically threatened Rosen with his job, saying that Donald Trump has said that he's going to fire you and put me in charge if you don't sign this letter. That's basically blackmail, okay? If that's not threatening and, per and, and corruptly persuading and using deception, I don't know what is, okay? It's deception because this, this election stuff is a lie, right? So that's intimidation, threat, and corrupt persuasion, okay? So Jeffrey Clark is guilty of uh, 18, violating 18 U.S. Code 1512B and also 18 U.S. Code 1505, 18 U.S. Code 371. Every single element of the crime are met for all of this, and you guys can pause the screen and read it if you like, but I've read these multiple times. Uh, all the elements of the crime here are met. He is guilty, okay? There's no doubt about it. So that's about it. That's all I got to say here. Um, Jeffrey Clark is a criminal and he should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And he should be going to jail for uh, 10 to 15 years, which is what he deserves. And the same thing goes for Donald Trump, Eastman, Giuliani, Flynn and Powell, uh, Sidney Powell. All these people were trying to corruptly influence uh, state legislatures, forcing them, threatening them, corruptly persuading them, in, uh, intimidating them in different ways to uh, to do things that were not in line with the election results, basically trying to get them to buy into their conspiracy theories and lies to get Donald Trump elected. Okay, that's what all these people were doing. And all those things are a crime. And the Justice Department must prosecute these people and put them in prison along with Donald Trump where they belong. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Peace. I'm Enigma Smith. This is Mega City News, the law. Justice Department control tells us that the current officially designated no-go crime zones are sectors 4 through 7, 19, and 30 to 34 inclusive. Zero tolerance policy has been declared for all of these sectors. So don't even think about spitting on the pedway. <laughs> Interplanetary news. Puerto Luminon sex serve, and that's a registered trademark apparently, are still demanding the location and repatriation of their so-called unlicensed criminal overlord, a field Drago son, who it seems is currently at large in the Big Meg. They say Justice Department authorities should never have allowed him down and in just on the basis of a clean megacity record to then let him vanish without a trace. We say you should have dealt with your own damn problem, so-called independent loonies. Maybe if you bought into the justice system when you had the chance, we might have given you a bit of help. This just in. We now have Justice Department confirmation that a number of bodies found throughout the city originally thought to be mere random kills do indeed bear all the signs of having participated in the killing zone. The illegal snuff game that in these last few weeks has taken the Big Meg by storm. Stay tuned to Mega City News for an in-depth report right after these important messages.